The axillary nerve. The axillary nerve is the most commonly injured nerve due to shoulder dislocation. It occurs in about 5% of shoulder dislocations. After shoulder dislocation, the patient will be unable to abduct the shoulder and the deltoid will have no muscle tone. The supraspinatus muscle will be firing and you will have decreased sensation or absence of sensation on the area of the lateral shoulder. After shoulder dislocation, if you can abduct the shoulder, rule out rotator cuff tear and examine the shoulder sensation. There's another scenario when the intact rotator cuff muscle may abduct the shoulder and confuse the examiner. It is important to check the sensation over the shoulder area. Regardless, if the rotator cuff is intact or torn, the sensation over the skin of the lateral shoulder will tell you if there is an axillary nerve palsy or not. Injury of the axillary nerve varies from neuropraxia to complete tear of the nerve. After passing through the quadrangular space, the axillary nerve divides into an anterior and a posterior division. The anterior division curves anteriorly under the deltoid muscle, and the anterior division supplies the anterior and the middle part of the deltoid. And the posterior division supplies the teres minor muscle and the remaining posterior part of the deltoid muscle as well as the skin over the shoulder. The anterior branch of the axillary nerve is located 5 to 7 cm distal to the lateral edge of the acromion. Don't exceed deltoid splitting approach more than 5 cm below the acromion or you may risk injury to the axillary nerve. How do you examine for the axillary nerve injury? Ask the patient to abduct the arm against resistance, which will examine the deltoid muscle strength. The anterior and middle fibers of the deltoid muscle can be seen and felt. So what do you do when the axillary nerve is injured? Give the patient a sling for comfort, physiotherapy, follow the patient progress clinically, usually the nerve will recover. Get EMG and nerve studies, you will see by phasic waves at three to four weeks if the nerve recovers. However, if the nerve does not recover, you will see fibrillation potentials and P waves in the EMG. Failure to abduct the shoulder after four to six months despite physiotherapy, then the condition is permanent and the patient may not achieve abduction of the shoulder without recovery of the deltoid. Since the intact rotator cuff muscle failed to abduct the shoulder and to take over the job of the deltoid, then this condition is permanent. Then you got two options. Exploration of the nerve for release, repair, or reconstruction of the nerve. You reconstruct it by a nerve graft. Or you do tendon transfer. The transfer of the trabezius to the proximal humerus, and the result of the transfer is usually poor.